Hello, true crimers. This is the case of David Bell. Viewer discretion is advised. So this is a case where I don't really have a lot of information. I cannot find the victim's like obituary or find a grave page. And there's just very little info on him. But this case occurred about 27 or so years ago. And it happened in a little town called Crisfield, Maryland. The information I do know about uh, Mr. David Bell, I do know that he was a very devoted husband and an incredibly loving father. I know for a fact he had one daughter. I think he may have three total children just based on an image or a photo that I can find. David was also a veteran. He actually fought in World War II. At this point in the case, he is about 69 years old and he had been visiting Crisfield, Maryland a lot. So at this point in his life, he is finding old homes He's renovating them and he is then renting them out to people. He had this desire to do something uh, good for the community. And what he was doing was he was turning these homes and renovating them, but turning them into like a boarding house. He absolutely, according to his daughter, he fell in love with Crisfield, Maryland. He absolutely adored this area. It's not where he lived on a permanent basis. The issue, though, according to detectives and his family, is that David was not doing background checks on any of the people he was renting out to. He His goal was to just house people that needed homes, and he wasn't doing much research into who they may have been. He didn't know if these people may have been criminals or had like substance abuse issues, if they had been uh, wanted felons or had previous convictions. He just opened these doors to literally anyone. And while there is something to appreciate about that, that his uh, goal was to just help people, help the community and help as many people as he could, there is also the other side where you are taking a risk because you're just letting anyone into these places and you are showing these places by yourself to people who may be seedy characters. He was just all about giving everybody a chance. That was it. And it's, you know, it's, it's a wonderful quality in a person and that says a lot about him. But his daughter would say that she and her mom were like really concerned about how he was doing this process. They were concerned about the kinds of people he would be renting to. And they would ask him like, do you feel safe? Are you safe doing this? And he always responded with, yeah, I'm fine. I'm, you know, everything is good. So in February of 1997, he is, he travels back to Crisfield. And, you know, before he leaves, he, he says, you know, goodbye. And I love you to his wife and his kids. And that was the last time they would ever see him. David had, you know, phone numbers that he could be reached at while in Crisfield. And, he wasn't answering any calls that were being made to him by his wife or his daughter. They were repeatedly trying to call him over the course of like a week and a half to two weeks and they got nothing. And they just felt in their core that something was wrong here. Something happened to him. So what they did was they contacted the Crisfield Police Department to say, can you please go do a welfare check on David Bell? So police arrived to the location where David was staying. I believe it was in, in one of the homes he was in the process of renovating. When police arrived, his vehicle was parked in the driveway. There was no outward signs of any kind of trouble or anything had gone wrong. No signs of a struggle, no broken windows, kicked in doors, nothing like that. Again, it is in the middle of being renovated. So, so because of the renovation, there may have been some easy points of entry. So it was February 25th, 1997. Police arrive, they see the car, they don't see anything wrong on the outside, but they are able to call a locksmith because they knocked on the door, nobody was answering. They couldn't see him through the windows. And so a locksmith came and opened the door and they found David Bell. 
there was blood everywhere. And David had been stabbed numerous times and his throat had been slashed all the way through. It was described by police uh, as a absolutely horrific scene where so much blood and there was a big mattress lying on top of David that was also soaked in his blood. There was a shoe print, I think in blood, on that mattress. While normal crime wasn't like completely out of the ordinary in this part of Maryland, murder was certainly a very rare thing. This had been the first homicide they had in 10 years. And there was just a lot that the Crisfield Police Department, which was a smaller police department, just didn't necessarily have all the resources to handle this. So they got, they basically had the Maryland State Police take over this case. So state police, they get to the crime scene, there's blood spattered all over the walls. There's puddles of blood everywhere. There is a thick lock of David's hair stuck in blood on the ground. This was such a brutal killing. Like this is in for someone like him too, like David Bell, kind, caring, generous, loving man for someone to do this to him and it was probably someone who he was trying to help i mean if we're being real here he probably let someone in that he thought i'm doing something good for and that person took advantage of it his daughter said that david was a hero he was a real hero he was all about helping people but sometimes or in this case it probably his generosity and kindness may have led to his murder. In 1997, there really wasn't cameras anywhere on people's homes, so they didn't have that. DNA technology was there, but it wasn't as prominent as it is now. The shoe impression, while good evidence, they needed someone to match it to. They never found anyone. They questioned other people that he had rented to. They tried to see if he had any kind of paper trails about who he might have been in contact with, but they have nothing. Uh, so whatever they may have looked into, whatever evidence they may have potentially collected, I can't see much about what they have because there's very little information about this case. They haven't matched it. If they have evidence, they haven't matched it to anyone like fingerprints or DNA or anything like that shoe impression hasn't matched anything. So someone either broke into this house while he was there or he walked into it or he let someone into this house. They don't really know and brutally murdered this man. This generous, caring man who was trying to help the community, trying to put people in homes that needed homes. He, his heart was in the right place and someone took advantage of that. And there, that's kind of like the big thing that hovers over this is ultimately him giving back to the community, him helping people who are maybe less fortunate is what led to his death. That's tragic. That's sad. That's horrendous. And he did not deserve this. He did not deserve this for even a second. No one does. They don't have a murder weapon. They don't have any witnesses. They don't have anything. And they really are asking for the public's help with any tiny little piece of information that might help them solve this case. Somebody somewhere out there knows the truth and perhaps that someone is you. If you have information about the murder of David Bell in Crisfield, Maryland in 1997 in the month of February, please call 443-783-7230. Any tiny piece of information can help. You can report your information anonymously. You don't have to say who you are. You just have to say what you know. So if you can help, please do so because David Bell and his family deserve that. So please help them get the justice he rightfully deserves. But that is it for this case, true crime, a Rooney Dooney Dingleberry Dongs. I hope you found it interesting. As usual, please subscribe, give this video a like so more people can see it. Follow me over on my two TikTok pages. Those are linked in the link tree in the description of this video below. The TikTok links also pop up here at some point in the beginning and at the end. So check that out if you want to. In the link tree below, you'll also see my merch store. We have t-shirts and hoodies and stuff. We ship all over the entire world. So please feel free to go look at that if you want to. And then lastly, if there's a case you want me to cover, just send me a really quick email. My email is listed below. Just email me the name of the case or the person, where it happened and when it happened. 
I'll add it to my list. The list is over 6,200 names. I pick the cases I cover each time at random, so I can't promise you when I'll cover that case, but I will get to it at some point eventually, I promise. But yeah, so that is it for this video and the story, True Crime Err. So until the next case, ta-ta for now. True Crime Arunis. Snap. Nope. I just Thanos snapped a lot of people out of existence. Oops. That's okay. <laughs>